Hey, what's going on, party people? I'm Aaron Jordan, creator of Wolfsbane Comics. You can find me at wolfsbanecomics.com or you can hit me up at um, Wolfsbane tw uh, Comics Twitter, Instagram, and you're listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We're joined today by a very talented comic creator. He is the creator and author and writer of uh, a horror werewolf comic, which, to be perfectly honest, is beautiful. I love, love the shadows. I love the characters. I love everything that he's put into this here. And I know you'll be pleasantly surprised as well too and will want to pick up his comic book when it's available since it probably is available but i'll let him talk about that that's about aaron jordan creator of wolf spain how are you doing today oh i'm doing great man how are you doing yeah. good doing good for those that don't know anything about yourself as a comic creator and as a as a person tell us who you are and what you're all about my name is right there Aaron jordan i'm actually a pretty new um comic creator and by that, I mean, like, professionally. I did a little doodles from time to time, but there's nothing compared to um, what I'm working with right now. I, I know the goal that I'm trying to do right now is I just want to make good comic books. I just want to make something that not only I enjoy, but um, people within that the genre that I create will enjoy as well. This is interesting because the horror genre is, I think, one of the most misunderstood aspects of comic creation. I think People don't give it enough credit. I, I think they're either turned off by other things they may have read in the past here too. But what is it that excites you about the horror genre that you want to create this particular comic? Honestly, I just like scaring, scaring myself. <laughs> I like giving myself that sense of dread. It really keeps me going. And you, you're pretty right um, when it comes to that because her, I'm learning now, is really hard to write. You have to be so on point with a lot of things and you have to be so subconscious about um the decisions that you make in it oh definitely for sure so the, the comic itself and, and this is something we haven't quite touched on yet tell us what wolf spain is all about to put it in the short terms wolf spain is a epic comic about a werewolf whose normal life is more complicated than his life as actually being a werewolf long terms it's basically this is this epic I want to say almost gothic tale where you're dealing with this guy who becomes this monster and he just doesn't care about that. He, he cares. It's just there's other things that's going on right now in his life that he needs to focus on that in order to cope with everything. And then you have other characters in there which share the role as the main character they have things going on that are similar to him. Sometimes it's not in a supernatural sense. The main detective, um, Detective Jack Mulligan, he's this guy that's dealing with a lot of stuff in his past. And it's gotten him to the point where he's struggling to find balance in his everyday life. And his um, journey is pretty much finding a way to do that. It, it almost feels like real life is intermingling with your comic these days. Um, bits and pieces, actually. There's a lot of things that I can relate to with almost every character. Well, we, we write what we know. That's the, the best part about when it comes to comic creation, especially about this type of, of horror genre here. comes to the creation of, of this comic itself here, you're the comic writer. And who's the artist uh, as part of your team? My artist for the inks and the pencils is um, Thomas Muzzle. Thomas Muzzle is really great. He's great at line work. He can do good inking. Mm -hmm. His shadows are really good. For the colors, it's um, done by um, Alexander Kutry. Kutry, he's the one that actually suggested that I go with a painted style. If you look real closely, you can see that there's little brush strokes that make up the entire death in this world. Yeah, that, that was one thing that, that really caught my eye was the light and the shadows that, that the various scenes that I saw played out really well. Like, And I love what, what's going on, uh, not only in terms of dialogue, but also in terms of the beauty of it, especially that werewolf painting. The full vision of that entire room was just, just amazing. Thank you. <laughs> that, that means a lot. 
<laughs> that whole thing was a process because um, I honestly didn't what I wanted the werewolf to look like. I just left that up to my artist. And he's done a great job fleshing out his look to make it very iconic. Once we get to issue two and beyond, you'll notice who this guy is when you um, pick him out from, from other creatures. It's good to have uniqueness in, in the characters that you're creating as well, too. But let's kind of talk about the world itself, because the the world, you're taking a bit of a modern take on on the werewolf genre. Usually when you think werewolves, you think like the, the olden days of 17th, 18th century, et cetera. And you're taking the modern world, you're putting these supernatural beings into place, and you're giving them modern day problems. And I think that's a great unique take on, on what you're doing. How did you come up with the world itself? I actually took a lot of inspiration from classical horror literature. A lot of the things that you see in Wolfsbane, you can find throughout tales like Hans, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Dracula, Frankenstein. It's all there. And what I basically did was I had to sort of reflect and put myself in other people's shoes to piece together what would happen in a world like this. Looking at, at our current world in 2022, then what did you take from it that you thought would be an interesting twist when you were putting these characters together? They're dealing with more real world problems than their supernatural problems. Well, I don't want to go too into um, spoilers. Oh. With um, the main detective, I'll go over him since his isn't really that major compared to everyone else. In his past, he actually had a wife and some events happened and she ended up dying. He's trying to um, cope with that. He's still not over her death. So he's dealing with that and he's dedicating his entire life to um, being a police officer. And him doing that causes him to sacrifice something else that he doesn't realize yet, but it's very important to him. I love, love the tease there. That that makes me want to read more. So what is the hardest part about being a, a comic writer? Is it the beginning, the middle, or the end of the process? Ending was the easiest so far. <laughs> I knew exactly what I wanted to happen. The ending's pretty good. Um, but I managed to um, figure out what happened there pretty easily because it's a setup for the next book. <laughs> but the beginning, that was pretty hard to write too. For this one, I'm going to say the beginning because I had to lace breadcrumbs along the way to make it so that we could get to um, the exciting parts of the story. Sometimes I think when it comes to, to creation of a story itself, you want to, like you said, jump into the, the good parts <laughs> rather yeah. than uh, deal with the, the mundane, boring stuff at the very beginning. But character development, especially character interactions, can be troublesome, I think, sometimes. Uh, dialogue is can be difficult for certain people. I, I don't know if it is for you or not. What was, the, what was the conversations like in your head regarding the characters throughout this this first book? Oh, it was a pain because <laughs> there are certain characters I wanted to have them say more. I was on a budget for this one, so there was really no t time for me to get out everything that I wanted to get out. I have to relegate that to another um, issue for the dialogue. Basically, there was a lot of compromise with what I had to do. When I go through the scenes and I try to pick which character says something, it's really hard for me to see what I want them to say and what comes off as a natural person saying it. It's really hard. If you're reading a book, it's way less immersive if you're seeing a character say something really dumb, opposed to a movie. With a movie, it can actually pass because you're actually seeing things take place as they happen. With a book, it's more like a still shot mm -hmm. and you analyze things more. And I think you're using your brain more often. What's the most important quality of a, of a comic writer in comics today? And how did that translate to this comic of Wolfsbane? I honestly think that separating yourself from your work is actually pretty important because there's a lot of things that um, you as a person could feel or think. If you want your story to be represented in the best way possible, you have to put yourself aside and you have to actually think in ways that you yourself wouldn't think. 
And that that is very different. How did you get over that hurdle? I have a little bit of an acting background. So I'm kind of used to getting into other people's shoes and thinking what um, other characters or what people would do in certain situations. It may not be perfect. I don't really have that much life experience as opposed to someone who's been at this for like 30 plus years. But it's still fun to do. And I think it's very important. What was the first thing that you wrote that made you realize I could do this as a career? Technically, I would have to say this, but a while back, I actually used to do stick figures, and they were a blast to write. I got to be as creative as I wanted, and the comics that I did back then were more of slapstick than anything. So I had these goofy characters that had this South Park level of humor and with a little bit of um, happy tree friends mi- mixed in. It, it, it was fun. If I had the chance to, yeah, I would bring that back and modernize it so it actually looks good. But I'd have to find a way to incorporate the stick figure style in general, too. <laughs> what was an early experience where you learned that language had power? That's actually tough. I'm going to have to think about that one. Because th- there's so many. Honestly, it's when I first discovered what an iambic um, pentameter is. It's pretty much what Shakespeare used to do a lot of his works. So you know how like every um, syllable ends on a strong word? That's pretty much what an iambic pentameter is. It gave a lot to his works because if you notice, it's pretty much how we speak in a way, like, Sometimes when we speak, we naturally just use the iambic pentameter. And I think that's just pretty awesome. Makes me want to maybe reread Shakespeare, although I probably won't do that anytime soon. But. Trust me, I, I feel you. <laughs> What's the most misunderstood aspect of when you tell someone that isn't in, in the field of comics, you know, that you're a comic writer? I think that particularly when it comes to crowdfunding, a lot of people, including myself when I started, a lot of people get it confused and think that the fame or success is going to just come easy. It, it honestly isn't. It, it's really hard. Even now, it's very hard to try and get yourself out there because you're competing with a lot of people that either have a big enough following or just have that raw charisma and or luck, and they can just put out amazing works of art. It, it's great. but also, the drive um, is something that you need to have as well, because comic books is one of the hardest mediums that I believe that you can get into. It's really difficult to um, try and gain an audience and try and get people who, let, let's say, aren't into comics um, to check your work out, because I think that's also a goal to strive for, get people that aren't experiencing comics to want to try that out that builds your audience and it makes people want to check you out even more so how has social media helped you not only from a a promotional standpoint of of your comic but creatively has it helped you networking with um, a lot of talented people in general networking is very important um without it i wouldn't have the success i've had today with the kickstarter even getting the book out there on this the show too it's it's a lot of work. Does writing energize you or does it exhaust you? Honestly, it exhausts me because I barely have enough energy in the day when I get it started. It's a mental stress for me because I'm using so much brain power and I'm thinking of how I can perfect this, this script that's in front of me. Sometimes I need to take a break. Sometimes I just need to re-energize or write some notes in it, go back a little later. It, it's, it's a lot. Heard something recently that th- this may help you, or, or I'm not sure, but it was, it was Sam Quentin from Snowpa Publishing. He said, but we have a creative bank and we can only take out so much creativity at a time before we're, we're in debt and we have to recharge ourselves. We have to find ways to recharge the bank or refill up the bank, deposit more creativity into the bank from a mental perspective is what he was referring to. And yeah. Yeah, moving moving away from what you're working on to do something else is a is a great you know alternative to to remain fresh. Definitely, I I really agree with that. If you don't find a way to make you want to enjoy doing what you're doing, 
then you're going to want to quit or you're just going to come out with really bad ideas because you're just trying to get the work done. Looking at the script you put together and, and working with your team, your amazing uh, anchor and, and uh, penciler and, and, of course, artists as well, too. What was the scene that you wrote in your script that turned out way better with the artwork attached to it than expected? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, hands down, the scene where the detective and the werewolf meet each other for the first time. The detective goes into the room. He thinks that he's just going to deal with a regular perp, but no, it's this big monstrosity. And after he faces it, he feels fear that he hasn't felt in a long time. The one moment in that scene, I don't want to give it away because I feel it's a very powerful moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. The emotion that the werewolf gives off is compelling. It makes you want to know more about what's going on. Once you find out what's going on, it all makes sense, and it means that much more afterwards. You're already on the show. You don't have to twist my arm so much. You know, I, I do <laughs> like what you're doing. <laughs> I was saying I can't help it. <laughs> what is your creative kryptonite? My creative kryptonite is just me trying to make the perfect art for them. And sometimes I have to realize things are either not going to go in the direction that you wanted it to, when it comes to the story and in other times I have to know when I have to know when things are done. I'm not going to be the next Shakespeare or um, Edgar Allan Poe overnight. These things take time and I just have to focus on having fun and creating the best possible story that I can. Might be an odd question, but how many unfinished scripts do you have? No comment. <laughs> nah, but, uh, I'd say um, right now, I only work on scripts for projects that I know that I want to do within the next year or so. So right now, I have about three unfinished scripts. And I already have the second issue of Wolf's Being Finished. So the first unfinished script is the third issue. And the other two scripts are two new projects that I'm going to be pushing out after Wolfsbane issue two or three. The first one is a new serialized story, less mature, because I wanted to reach a a wider audience, give something that kids could um, look up to a little bit. The third one is my first take at a actual graphic novel and I'm going to be taking a lot of inspiration up from Jack Kirby in the um, art style and the whole cosmic world. Hey, that's great to hear. I mean, I'm glad that you're, you're planned out so far in advance. I'm glad that you have many projects that you're excited about as well, too. It just means you got to come back on the show later on in the year, maybe, uh, and talk more about what, what's coming up in, in your wheelhouse. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> but is there anything I haven't touched on that you'd like to showcase those that are watching and listening to this interview? We do have the book available on our website now. It's really affordable, actually. I wanted to have it so that people could get a good product and not have to break their wallets trying to get it. Collecting comic books is a really expensive hobby, and I just wanted to try to ease that burden a little bit. The only thing that I'd say like would cost the most would be um, variant covers for collectors. And even that, right now, that's running you around $8. I honestly think that that's a pretty affordable thing. That's only going to be for the first issues, though. I think um, the later issues, issue two and three of Wolfsbane, are going to be $2 extra. Right now, issue one is $5, and issue two is going to be $8, and that's going to be how it is for all the other issues. The reason why I did that is because I wanted people to um, check out the first book and figure out if they're interested if, without having to spend more money. What in life is beautiful to you? I would say all the interactions that I can experience. I work in retail right now, and some of the conversations I've had with customers is really um, have been really pleasant. It gives me a new look on life, a new look at other people's experiences. 
I get to understand a little bit of what they go through in life, how they um how they act. I honestly wouldn't trade that for the world. I just like talking to people. What is the second wisest thing you've heard someone say to you that has stuck with you in your lifetime? That is a very tough question because people have said a lot to me over the years. <laughs> it's hard to pinpoint which one would technically be the second wisest. Someone told me not to rush into things. And honestly, that's a really, really good advice because right, a few months ago, I put myself in a situation where I, it took longer for me to get things started with um, the book and the company than it would have if I actually just sat back and did my my research. I can understand that. I mean, we we yeah. jump into situations where we think we have a handle on it, and and everything goes to shit. <laughs> exactly, man. It's like uh, I thought I planned everything right. Uh. <laughs> Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? The person that inspired me the most, I would say Togashi. Togashi from uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. He is hands down a really great inspiration for me. Not only was his art really good and detailed when it needed to be, his story and his world building for both Hunter Hunter and Yu Yu Hakusho are top notch. And I wish that he'd feel better so he could finish the, the book. <laughs> Hunter x Hunter is a series, just even the animated series, just so amazing. There are scenes in that where I've rewatched it and, and just looking at the animation, not, not even if it's the simplistic portion of the animation itself is just beautiful. I've rewatched that at least five times. <laughs> See, I still need to watch it. I, I have um, lazy man syndrome. So every time I put something on my list or I write a schedule down for, I randomly decide not to do it. I either forget about it or I just put it off. You're finding your your place in the world of, of being an independent comic creator. Do you consider yourself personally successful? As of right now, not really. Um, I say that because even though I just started, there's a lot of things that I realize I need to do. and that kind of stunted my growth. But in a few years, the future me will say, yeah, I think I'm pretty successful. And honestly, that depends on the sales that I make on my website for my next campaign. If I surpass the, um, the goal that I reached last campaign, then I will definitely say that I'm successful. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failure? Honestly, I just take it on the chin and I realize that there are things that I can do better that I can definitely take into account for next time because everything is a learning experience. If you're really passionate about what you do, then just take it and find out what you can do to make sure that that is better um, the next time around. Younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way. And they may want to be a, a writer, a comic book artist. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? Looking at it from personal experience, what inspired me were all the creators that they just loved doing what they were doing. For me to see them doing what they loved and they actually found success in it, it makes me think that, hey, I can do that too. I have ideas that I want to put to, um, put forth to the table. And whether it's indie, whether it's mainstream, people can tell whether you're making the book because you believe in it and you like it. And if it's just another job or if there's something else going on in it. They, they can tell your passion for what you're doing, for sure. Exactly. Well, I hate to say it, that in this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking, you know, for those that, want to support you and help you in your journey as a new comic creator, how can they can support you from a, a comic perspective? The main way that you can support me is going on my website, wolfsbanecomics.com. That's with a U and not an O. Go there, sign up for the newsletter. I'm going to be tr focusing heavily on that soon after um, I get all these orders out. Please check out Wolfsbane. 
if you um, have any comments, questions, or you just want to talk to me, discuss comics a little bit, you can hit me up in, you can hit me up on my Facebook and Instagram at Wolfsbane Comics. You, you can go from there. It's pretty easy to get in contact with me. Um, I'm friendly. I don't bite. I try to be as respectful as possible. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I love what you're doing. I can't wait to see what you do in the future. You've, you've piqued my interest in what you have upcoming in, in the following year or this year and the next year, however long you are creating. Have to have you back on. We'll talk definitely more manga and anime, that's for sure. And, and next time you're on, now that, I, now that I know a little bit more about you, we're going to do an overrated, underrated anime manga edition, specifically just for you. Nice. <laughs> I can't wait for that one. <laughs> like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, twogeekstalking.com or tgtmedia.com. And of course, on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.